I receive this paper catalog from time to time and I love it because buying art supplies is a complete hobby by itself. And I was looking for brushes. And there was a little leaflet with some brushes by a French brand, which is called Leonard, about Leonardo da Vinci, obviously. And it was founded in 1779. So this is a brand I love. I already have a ton of brushes from them. And I was looking at the catalog and then I found a special shape that I had never seen before. And this one is called a pinceau jupon, which would be a petticoat brush. And the name by itself was just enough, so I buy it. And here is the brush. And this brush, I had so much fun testing it. I made a video on TikTok and Instagram and the video had a lot of comments, a lot of questions about how do you call this in English? And it was really fun because later the community manager of the brand reached out to me saying, oh, I love your TikTok, I love what you're doing. And then she invited me to visit the factory. And even if I have a lot of brushes from Leonard, I paid for each one of them. There is no affiliation and I have not, I'm not sponsored for this video, although I wish I was, but that's the way it is. And I love this brand. So let's go for it and see how they make these brushes all by hand. Look at that. And you can visit it too. If you happen to come to Saint-Brieuc in Brittany, France, they have visits organized in summer and during the vacation. They are located in the same buildings since 1840. Oh, amazing. I was like in a candy store. I wanted to try all the brushes. Believe me, I had a hard time not taking everything in my bag. <laughs> They have cosmetic brushes, paint brushes with different hair, different sizes, different shapes, uh, different purposes for oil, for acrylic, for watercolor. I really had a great time. They make uh, specific uh, shapes for calligraphy, even for children with a nice print on it, vegan, Whatever you name it, they make brushes for a long time now, so they have a lot of experience about it. And including specific orders with very, very large brushes. I would love to play with this one. She explained me the different hair you can use for brushes, being natural or synthetic. They do all they can to replace natural hair with synthetic brush, but sometimes it's difficult to get the exact same properties if you have synthetic instead of natural, but they do their best and they even have a vegan brand now. So that's really interesting. And I discovered a lot of properties for the hairs. Another very important part in the brush is the ferrule, which is a metallic part that will hold together the hair and the handle. They can have different shapes, circular, rectangular, and the way you press on the ferrule will give a specific shape to the brush. For example, for the fan brush, if you press a certain way, you will have the hair expanding in a fan shape. Now let's see how they make a brush. They have a lot of experience. They need three complete years to be a good brush maker, which is a lot when you think about it. They take a little part of hair and they know exactly how much to take from it. If you want to make a size 12 or a size 20, they don't wait, they just know how much hair they need. Then they will insert it in the mold and will make a knot around it to hold the hair together. Hello. And 
then the ferrule has glue inside and they will insert the handle in it and to secure everything they will place it inside a crimping machine so the ferrule is really tightly secure around the handle. So this is why you don't want to have your ferrule in water as this may dissolve the glue and separate the handle from the ferrule. And this is not what you want, I'm pretty sure of that. And once the brush is finished, they need to print on it. And for this, they have a cute machine that is taking gold ink and printing directly on the handle. And before having this machine, they were using printing blocks with gold film and it was lasting very long. Actually, I have brushes that I use a lot and they still have their printing on it. the last two I bought from the Ultramarine series Outremer and those are handmade just in the factory I've been visiting and that I'm showing you today it's really cool because there is meaning to me because I have seen people making those exact same brushes so this one is special for watercolor and you may notice that the hair is really hard. You cannot bend it. It's because they protect it with Arabic gum, actually. So it keeps its shape. And what I've learned is that you have to place it for 10 or 15 minutes in warm water, not hot. You can place your finger inside and it will dissolve the Arabic gum, and then you can use it. You have some bubbles coming out, and you see the hair is beginning to separate. So I will let this sit for a while. Look at that now. It's really bending very well. And all the Arabic gum is removed. So this is a good tip. If you have Arabic gum at home, you can reshape your old brushes. Just removing the water. Look at that. Such a fine tip. This one is a bit more broad at the end. Mm. I need to test them. Well, I hope you liked this visit. I learned a lot about how you make a paintbrush. And believe me, I will take good care of them now even if I already did, but now that I know how much work is involved in one single brush, that someone took the hair, made a knot around it, placed it inside the ferrule, and the most beautiful part of it, they are not as expensive as you may think they are. And if you want to order some, I had a link in the description below. And as I said in the introduction, no affiliation here. You can find them easily in France and in Europe, but not so much in the rest of the world. They are a small company with about three people and they don't have the ability to distribute all over the world. So sorry about my American friends. No, let's go paint.